Hey folks, this is Riker with another gaming news wrap up. Th okay, yes, I shaved. The beard is gone. Last week on Twitch, we did a charity stream. We raised money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. We blew past our our goal and chat decided as a stretch goal that I needed to shave my face. So I did it. It's done. Let's move past this. Yes, it bothers me. More than it bothers you, if you can believe it. I have not been without a beard for 15 years. This is a week's worth of growth. I am planning to grow it back. All right, there's big news this week. Let's get to that. In today's video, we're going to cover an update on the Warcraft 3 Reforged situation. Blizzard has responded. We'll cover the Activision Blizzard Q4 earnings call, in which we learn a lot about how Activision Blizzard is pushing mobile hard. We'll talk about the new man joining Blizzard to oversee all of Diablo, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description below, along with all links to articles that I reference. But right before you skip ahead, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted of new Saturday episodes and stay up to date on gaming news highlights. Now, before we move on, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Skyforge, a free-to-play science fantasy MMO that we first checked out back when it was in beta in 2015. Just look at that no hat Riker. It turns out since then a lot has been added to the game, including seasons. Now these seasons are new story drops with new challenges that bring limited time exclusive rewards. Most recently we have the Reaper's Invasion in which Thanatos, the god of death, is looking to destroy the world. Now there are seasonal challenges that you can complete divided into various difficulties, easy, normal, and hard that each give you points, and the more points you accumulate, the more invasion exclusive rewards you unlock, including the Icy Armor at level 14 and the Wings of Death at level 20. There's a total of 20 rewards that you can get, and 10 of those are available completely free to play, with the other 10 being acquirable through the Invasion Pass. Now to access invasions, you have to have played through the campaign enough to have unlocked your Divine Form. So if you want to hop right in and get playing, go ahead and click on the link in the video description below. Alright, on to a follow-up on our Warcraft 3 Reforged controversy. Now we covered the controversy in last week's video. If you have not seen it, I do encourage you to check that out. But since then, there have been a couple new developments. First off, Blizzard has begun to offer automated, instant, no questions asked refunds for Warcraft 3 Reforged. It doesn't matter how much time passed, it doesn't matter whether you played the game, you will get a refund. This is coming off the tail of people having difficulty figuring out how to refund and allegations that people posting on the forums explaining how to get a refund were being banned. Now some will of course argue that Blizzard is just doing this to save face. Maybe that's the case, but at least you can get refunded. What I feel the more important point to bring up here is not whether Blizzard is being altruistic in its offering of refunds, but rather, what about people who just want to play Warcraft 3 Classic? What are they supposed to do? Because again, with the launch of Warcraft 3 Reforged, Classic Warcraft 3 was effectively killed. The only way to play the game now is through the Reforged launcher. Now these people have had features removed that were previously available to them. People that never even bought Reforged to begin with, people that potentially were playing Warcraft 3 every day, uh, but until Reforged launched for all we know, have had their gaming experience impacted due to the launch of Reforge. Now I understand the desire to move to a unified launcher, to have a better platform, and that down the line, more features will be re-added and there'll be less missing from those who have the base game. But could there not have been some grace period to allow people to keep playing on the old launcher or otherwise offer some clear and obvious way for your customers to keep enjoying the game the way they've always enjoyed it? Now, allegedly, you can still download and run the 1.31 PTR of Warcraft 3, and it allegedly still works. This is the closest you can get to playing unreforged Warcraft 3 at this point. I'm concerned that this is just an oversight by Blizzard and they will eventually take this download down or otherwise disable it. But until that happens, I'll pop the download link in the video description below because the only other option is Sailing the Seven Seas. Now, one thing we mentioned last week was the Metacritic rating for Warcraft 3 Reforged was 
at an abysmal 0.8 and it dropped to something like 0.6 by the time I was editing my video. So surely since then that score has rebounded, right? Surely some positive votes have come in to balance things out. No, it's 0.5 now. This is potentially Metacritic's lowest scored game ever according to user ratings. The reception was so poor that Blizzard was forced to address it during its earnings call. And we also got a post on the forums by community manager Kavax. Let's peruse that first. Kavax said, quote, First off, we want to say we're sorry to those of you who didn't have the experience you wanted, and we'd like to share our plans for what's coming next. There were a few hours during launch day where we experienced server load issues that impacted players' ability to jump right in, but we were able to resolve those later in the day. Now he's referring to reports from a lot of people that multiplayer was virtually unplayable. It was very difficult to get a game going, so... It's good to know this was just launch day issues and not fundamental problems with the game. That said, you'd think Blizzard would have learned how to launch a game by now, because time and time again they tend to have launches in which there's always server problems on day one, but I'm not going to condemn a game entirely because of bad day one performance. A lot of us have been burned by Diablo Error 37 back in the day. People took time off of work and were not able to play, so I don't mean to diminish that. It definitely sucks, but if you're planning to play a game for the next two years, being not able to play it for one day in the grand scheme of things is not the end of the world. It's upsetting and you have a right to be upset, but it doesn't automatically make the game bad. Then Kavax went on to mention that they were rolling out patches for a number of bugs. And then he went on to say, quote, Another area of concern we're seeing is regarding online features such as leaderboards and clans, which applies to all Warcraft 3 players, including those who haven't purchased Reforged. At BlizzCon, we talked a lot about how the team is actively working on standing up the back end to ensure a smooth transition to this new MMR system. That's a PvP matchmaking system. Much like we did with StarCraft Remastered. As with Remastered, these and other features will be included in a major patch for Reforged, which will also address the issue for players of the original game. We'll share release plans as work progresses in the coming weeks, Please be assured that the team is hard at work on standing these features up. Now, that's fair. These features will come. Okay, great. I, however, don't like this culture of releasing games before the full product is there. This culture has existed for over a decade. It's endemic of the industry. It's not just Blizzard, but I don't like it. I want a finished product. And I think the main sticking point is that Blizzard didn't used to go along with that. Blizzard's mantra used to be when it's ready, and now it seems the mantra is, eh, it's ready enough. He goes on to say, quote, There are some individual concerns we've seen that we're not currently planning to address, and we wanted to give the community a heads up. As of version 1.3 of the original game, we saw very low usage of tournaments and of the Reign of Chaos rule set, so we removed both in mid-2019, in version 1.31. Eliminating the maintenance for underused elements has helped us streamline our overall support of the game and focus on areas impacting the most players. So basically, there were a number of changes that were already being made to Warcraft 3, the base game, in preparation of the Reforged launch, so it's technically not the Reforged launch that has led to this. At least they explain why it was removed and that it's in order to make the game overall better. He goes on to say, Related to that, as we talked about last year at BlizzCon, we did not want the in-game cutscenes to steer too far from the original game. We went a little deeper into the thought process behind that at the show, but the main takeaway is that the campaigns tell one of the classic stories in Warcraft history, and we want to preserve the true spirit of Warcraft 3 and allow players to relive these unforgettable moments as they were, albeit rebuilt with new animations and the higher fidelity art. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I could see the logic in that statement, but I doubt any significant portion of the community felt that way. I think when we saw that awesome cutscene at BlizzCon 2018, most of us were impressed and thrilled about it. And I don't think anyone was like, um, actually, I prefer if it looked like it looked in the original. It has strayed too far. It looks too much better now. This is no longer my experience with this game. I mean, isn't the whole point of a remaster to make it better? <laughs> I mean, who would complain that it's too much better? I see one of two things here. Either this is legitimately the reason that they went for this, which I baffles me that anyone, let alone a majority of people, would argue to have it not be drastically improved, at least in the cutscenes. Or it was just a lot of work to redo that one cutscene 
and it didn't make sense to have some cutscenes be super awesome and others be less so. So they just decided to make them all less so because they were running up against the clock, they had a development budget to work with, and... I mean, that's a fine reason. And if that is the truth, I wish they would have just said that. It's a lot more believable than that people wouldn't want nicer cutscenes. Now that said, he does reference that this was spoken about at BlizzCon. So maybe at BlizzCon they fully discussed why it is important and why they made this decision. And maybe that panel makes everything make perfect sense. But this touches upon another issue. And it's a couple times here where in his messaging, I almost feel a little bit of, well, if you guys had paid attention during BlizzCon 2019, you wouldn't be surprised by any of this stuff. And okay, but you can't assume that your consumers have followed every little tidbit of news and update on your product. Yes, it's fair to assume that the most fanatical and engaged members of the community will have followed all that news. But for the average consumer that maybe just saw that 2018 trailer video and now remembered that it's releasing and wanted to buy it, you could understand why maybe they feel a little misled. He closes by saying, We know this update doesn't address all questions, but we're committed to the development and support of this game. We hope you'll keep an eye out for this week's patch and future updates and let us know what you think as we continue fine-tuning things. So, I mean, at this point, Blizzard has done all that it can do. It's giving refunds and it's working on the game and promising to fix things and add features. And during their Q4 financials call, Blizzard boss J. Allen Brack had this to add, quote, Concerning Warcraft 3 Reforged, honestly, it's a bit of a hurry. Our community has come to expect really amazing things from us, and we've heard from them that we did not achieve that bar. But we stand behind our games and have consistently shown that not only do we support them, but we continue to build on them even after launch. And we're committed to doing that here as well. And so we're going to continue to update the depth of the game and we'll continue to update the community with our plans going forward. Now, ever since Warcraft Theory Forge launched, people have been asking me, do you think that Diablo 4 is doomed now? The company that made Warcraft Theory Forge this way, what do you think they're going to do with Diablo 4? And nothing about Warcraft 3 Reforge or its launch or its state gives me any concerns for Diablo 4. The simple reason being that Diablo 4 has a full development team built specifically for Diablo 4, whereas Warcraft 3 Reforge was being handled by Blizzard's classic games team. And not to say that they're a lesser team in any form, but they have to manage a number of different games. They're not giving their undivided attention with a AAA game budget to a project. Reforged is certainly a much smaller project relative to a full-scale AAA release. But speaking of that Q4 earnings call, that takes us to our next topic. If there's one main takeaway from Activision Blizzard's 2019 Q4 earnings call, it's that the company is leaning into mobile gaming in a major way. Apparently, Call of Duty's mobile title has been extremely successful. And so now Activision Blizzard is looking to ensure that it's making mobile games for all of its major IPs. Dennis Durkin, Chief Financial Officer and President of Emerging Businesses, had this to say, quote, Our business units will continue to tap into our portfolio of beloved intellectual property, that is, franchises like Warcraft and Overwatch and Starcraft to bring several remastered and reimagined experiences to our players in 2020, which we will announce closer to launch. So we saw how well Warcraft 3 Reforged was received. We can expect a lot more remasters coming from Active Blizzard, apparently. Durkin went on to say, quote, Going forward, we will maintain our operating discipline and focus as we execute against a great content lineup this year and a pipeline that includes Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, and Diablo Immortal, and multiple unannounced initiatives, including several mobile titles. So we've known now for a while that Blizzard, at the very least, is in a current stage of game development that is virtually unprecedented. They've never had so many new projects ongoing at once. Our suspicions have now been confirmed that several of those, at least across Activision and Blizzard, are mobile titles. CEO Bobby Kotick had this to add, quote, When I think about mobile overall for Blizzard, we have our roots in PC gaming, and we're going to continue to be deeply committed to the PC. But we do think there are opportunities for additional experiences in different ways for players to engage on different kinds of devices. 
and we see mobile is also a way to attract players that we don't currently reach on PC and console. So we think the mobile opportunity for Blizzard overall is very substantial, and Diablo Immortal will be our first release as a mobile-first game. And we continue to work on multiple mobile initiatives across Blizzard, in addition to the PC and console games. So I think Kodak here clearly got the memo from BlizzCon 2018 that PC gamers want to be reassured that Activision Blizzard still cares about PC. And I think what he's saying here with regards to their aims with mobile is very honest. They're looking to expand into a new audience. They're not under any delusions that they're looking to convert their PC and console gamers into hardcore mobile gamers. They're mostly looking to tap into a heretofore untapped market for Activision Blizzard. I think the concern emerges when we see the way mobile gaming is trending. We see how it is taking over from a financial perspective, from a revenue perspective. It is taking over the gaming industry. It's working its way to eclipsing the revenue of the other consoles. So what's going to happen when mobile revenue is so much greater if this happens what happens if activision blizzard's mobile revenue is so much greater than its pc and console revenue will it continue to be deeply committed to the pc we're afraid of where things might be going i mean you can't blame the company for wanting to go where the money is that doesn't mean we can't be concerned about things already kodak is saying quote mobile in fact is now our leading platform he goes on to say quote we are hard at work on high quality mobile games for all of our most important franchises and he later adds quote but i think a key theme throughout our call is that the market is certainly ready for our franchises on mobile when we make a great game and kind of stay true to the core tenets of what made the franchise great in the first place and we execute on that. Now we can reach just millions of millions of people around the globe that may have never experienced our franchise before. And that's just very exciting for us as an organization because that obviously is true, not just for Call of Duty, but also for the many great franchises that we have in the organization. And I think the concern here is, again, despite the words of reassurance that PC is a focus, we understand that a corporation is meant to make money, to drive profit, that it's not a charity, it's not a passion project, it's not a hobby. So even if those words are sincere, even if there is earnest intent to remain true to PC roots, is that a promise that a corporation can really keep if profits, if revenue, are clearly pointing in a different direction? In 10 years from now, will our beloved franchises now be known as mobile franchises and the days of seeing a big budget triple a blizzard game with amazing cinematics and story and as millions and millions of dollars have been invested into it to make it just a truly astounding game are those days going to be gone because it's just far more profitable to spend less money on a different kind of game it's like that meme you versus the guy she told you not to worry about it strikes upon that pang of insecurity where it's like, well, okay, for now she's still with me, but it's only a matter of time. Kodak went on to say, quote, I think one of the things that we found with the launch of Call of Duty Mobile, with games like Hearthstone, our designers and developers have gotten a lot more excited about reaching bigger, broader audiences. And we've seen that across the whole company. And so I think what you're going to continue to see is a commitment to innovation on all of our franchises. And that now includes commitment to innovation with mobile devices. And I think that as long as we can deliver new innovative gameplay with great user experiences on mobile devices, you'll see more franchises taking advantage of that as a platform. And Kodak finished by saying, Quote, mobile is now our largest platform and you'll continue to see us with not just mobile touch points, but all the other important touch points that we've now added into the business, expanding the reach of our franchises, the engagement of our franchises, and the monetization of our franchises. And speaking of their mobile projects, we also finally got an update on Diablo Immortal, which leads us into our Diablo news. President and Chief Operating Officer Cody Johnson had this to say, quote, Blizzard's teams, as you know, are working on the broadest pipeline in its history, including Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 for PC and console, and Diablo Immortal, a mobile game developed in partnership that is continuing to make good progress and will move into the testing phase with its first 
regional test planned for the middle of the year. Dennis Durkin went on to add, quote, Diablo Immortal is planned to enter a regional testing toward the middle of the year, but we don't have any material revenue from that title in our guidance. Now, my understanding is that that means that they're not putting predicted revenue for Diablo Immortal in their 2020 projections. I'm not sure if this is just common practice or if this means they don't plan to launch the game in 2020. And then Bobby Kotick gave us our most comprehensive response on Diablo Immortal when a Goldman Sachs analyst asked him, quote, could you just give us an update on Diablo Immortal and discuss how that informs your go-forward mobile strategy for Blizzard? Kodak replied, absolutely. So as you know, we've been working closely with NetEase on the development of the game, and our goal is to deliver an authentic and deep Diablo experience for mobile. We did show an updated version of the game at BlizzCon last year, and we saw a lot of excitement. We've also begun doing internal playtests or additional internal playtests since that time, and the results are encouraging. We're getting ready to move to the next phase of development with some regional alpha testing later this year. Player feedback is invaluable, and as we continue to work on building the game, we will be looking to that feedback to make sure that we're making a really great Diablo experience. So putting all that info together, it sounds like Diablo Immortal will enter external alpha testing around summertime. And on to some other Diablo news, which includes Diablo 4. Game industry veteran Rod Ferguson is leaving the coalition to work on the Diablo franchise with Blizzard. He tweeted, starting on May 1st, I will join Blizzard to oversee the Diablo franchise. Now, since 2006, Rod Ferguson has worked his way up the industry, working as a producer, senior producer, executive producer, director of production, executive vice president of development, program management, eventually leading him into a position as a studio head. He's worked on a number of titles in the Gears of War franchise, on Shadow Complex, Lost Planet 2, Infinity Blades 1 and 2, Bulletstorm, and Bioshock Infinite. Basically, since 2006, he has not gone more than two years without having his name attached to a released game. Now, given he's largely worked in producer roles in the industry, what this tells me is that he is very good at getting games shipped. A producer and a developer is sort of like a manager and an artist. The developer is the person who creates the game, the producer is the person that ensures the game gets created and gets created on schedule. And you see multiple reports of people who have worked under Ferguson who have nothing but good things to say about him. So this suggests to me that he's not good at getting games released because he just pushes devs to get something out, but because he manages to inspire them to complete the work in a timely manner. Most of the titles that Ferguson has shipped have also been successes, be it critical successes or financial successes or both. Now, yes, he had a lot to do with Gears of War 5, and while I'm not myself a player of the game, it does seem like a large portion of the community of Gears of War are not happy with that game. Dissecting the complaints, it sounds like the gameplay itself is fine. The complaints mostly revolve around the monetization model, which actually does not use loot boxes, but rather a battle pass system where you can pay for your battle pass and then through that you can unlock cosmetics and rewards. And the majority of the complaints seem to stem around the fact that the rewards were either too expensive or not unique or cool enough or a mixture of both. So if the biggest thing we have to worry about in Diablo 4 is that the cosmetic microtransactions will be overpriced or not cool enough, I think we're in an okay place. So in short, I'm optimistic about Ferguson moving in to oversee all of Diablo, and I think that means, be it Diablo Immortal or Diablo 4 or both, these games will now hopefully ship a little sooner than not even Blizzard soon. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. But as a reminder, do check out that link to Skyforge. Click on that in the video description and give that a try if it so interests you. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content. Hey folks!